Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. So um, my understanding is that um, <clears throat> I actually got the time wrong. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, I entered it into my Google Calendar at the correct time and it um, got everything completely confused. So I'm really, really happy that everyone is, uh, is actually uh, still with us. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if you just give me a moment. Um, so I'm just going to check what everyone sees. All right. So everyone should see a um, a uh, disclaimer on your on the screen. Uh, please confirm for me if you do see the disclaimer. That would really help me. Um, then we can get going. All right, thank you. So, um, uh, just a mandatory disclaimer before I introduce myself and before we get going on the webinar. Uh, my name is Ilan Asbel. I am currently the CEO uh, of uh, AutoCharters.com, have been since 2008. Um, I'm here to present to you, obviously give you an overview of the, of the product, of AutoCharters the product. Um, but I also want to let you know that I was uh, actually uh, a trader many years ago um, and so I have uh, not only knowledge about the auto charters product of course but uh, extensive uh, trading and financial markets experience uh, probably 15 years of, of trading experience so uh, you you know when it comes to the questions and answers uh, you're you're more than welcome to to ask me questions about trading techniques too and uh, not only about the auto charters product so feel free to ask um, any of those uh, any of those kinds of, of uh, questions. Um, all right. So um, uh, with that said, uh, uh, the disclaimer, I want to quickly read it to you. Uh, the information containing this material is intended for general advice only. It doesn't take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. Um, FE Markets has made an effort to ensure accuracy of the information as at the date of publication. FE Markets does not give any warranty or presentation to the accuracy, reliability, or completeness of the information containing this uh, material, okay? Um, uh, so uh, please keep that in mind when we are doing this presentation. And now I'm going to switch to a, uh, a, uh, a different uh, screen. I'm gonna switch to my uh, MetaTrader and hopefully that'll switch on your side too. Okay, I hope the sound is okay. I hope everything is okay uh, because it is uh, going on four o'clock in the morning for me. So, and as you can see, I'm working from home just like the rest of the world, right? Okay, so um, you can see my MetaTrader. And um, when you open your MetaTrader, it might look something like this with a chart here and another chart here and another chart here and a whole bunch of charts everywhere. And when you look at Meta, you're thinking, what in God's name is actually going on, right? Um, uh, how am I going to be trading? What am I? Where do I start? What do I look at? Uh, I don't know where to even begin, right? And this is something that a lot of traders go through, and especially uh, during volatile times like now, um, the markets are just absolutely going insane, right? Um, uh, I'm hoping that that the people on this webinar uh, aren't the ones that have experienced a um, uh, a margin call like a lot of traders are are experiencing at the moment uh, because of this massive uh, volatility. And so today's webinar, I'm going to show you two things. Uh, it, the, the meaning, the purpose of it is to give you an overview. I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you an overview of using order charters to enter the market. But actually, uh, what I want to do because of current climate um, market conditions in the climate, I actually want to focus on um, another little tool that's uh, really overlooked um, in, in, in MetaTrader, and that's called the Order Charters Risk Calculator. Uh, and that'll be to, towards kind of in the next 15 minutes or so. And that's going to be really important because it show you, shows you how to actually manage your risk uh, in, um, in, uh, in Meta so that you do not uh, lose an excess amount of, um, of capital. Um, okay, so so let me uh, let me start off with uh, with an overview of all the charters, and for that purpose, I'm actually going to go into into PowerPoint, 
okay? And, uh, and I'm going to uh, walk through a PowerPoint uh, presentation. All right, and the reason I'm not putting this, uh, well, actually, let me try to put it into uh, presentation mode. But, um, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, good, it actually works in presentation mode because I'm working on a multi-screen device, obviously. So um, sometimes the uh, PowerPoint puts the presentation to a different screen. So um, really uh, what I wanted to do is highlight um, your uh, pain points as you know, it probably is what your experience is, what to trade and when to trade, obviously, as I mentioned, um, when to close the position and how much uh, money to risk. And the last point is going to be very important. And I'll be focusing on that towards the end of the presentation. But to give you an overview of uh, how Autochartus analyzes the market, right? So the first thing that Autochartus does, it identifies what we call overbought oversold levels, right? And tries to identify those for you. And I'm going to annotate my screen um, for, uh, for all of you that don't know what I'm talking about. So an oversold level means the price of an instrument is too cheap and the market thinks it's too cheap. And an overbought level is when the price of an instrument is too expensive and then the market dips. So over here is an example of when a market um, is, uh, is, too, is too cheap, right? I've just circled that little um, that little um, area of this euro USD chart, and over here, the market has thought that this price is too expensive. A euro USD. Similarly, over here, too cheap, and then back over here, too expensive. And so you'll find this if you've been trading long enough that the markets uh, tend to do that. They tend to fluctuate between uh, overbought and oversold levels, right? Um, too cheap, too expensive, too cheap, too expensive. And they do that over a short period of time sometimes, sometimes they do it over a long period of time. But there's always this up and down, uh, up and down movement. In fact, even if I go back to my, um, to my MetaTrader uh, right now, and, I, and I'll show you what this looks like over here, right? Um, uh, here is um, these kind of overbought, oversellable. Too expensive, uh, too cheap, right? Too expensive, too cheap. Uh, yeah, too cheap again, too expensive, right? Always this fluctuation uh, between um, uh, up and down uh, movement, right? The too too cheap, um, uh, too expensive uh, movement, right? And this is what Autochartus provides. And now, what really the the, the real um, the, the the real thing that it, that it tries to to do for you is it tries to identify when there's been potentially a change in the sequence of these up and down overbought oversold levels and as you can see in this example here on euro usd um the price was going through these overbought oversold levels right and then there was a breakout right so suddenly this trend of overbought oversold didn't happen anymore and the price broke through this um this trend line okay and then because of that we provide a a target level of where the price could be going now um, this target level is, um, you're probably wondering, how do we get to that target level, right? What, what, what do we um, look at the direction of the wind and get it? No, actually, this target level is um, based on technical analysis theory. Now, today's presentation uh, is not going to go very deeply into, uh, into the theory of chart patterns and technical analysis itself. I just want to give you an overview of the product, right, and what it does for you. Um, and then in subsequent webinars, we'll go much more deeply into some of the more um, in, intricate and technical parts of um, of the actual um, of the actual uh, service, right? Um, so, but but um, in essence, uh, Autochartist is not anything new in the market. It's not a a new kind of trading theory or anything like that. It is an automation of exi existing technical chart pattern, the technical analysis theory, right? So it's just an automation of an existing well-known uh, uh, technical analysis theory. And if you open up any book on technical analysis, you know, you'll, you'll find a chapter on technical, on technical chart patterns. Okay, so, so with that said, uh, let, me, let me continue. And you can see that uh, Autochartist um, identifies um, these kind of breakouts um, on, in, in, a, in different ways, right? So there's a breakout of these trending, uh, uh, of these trend lines. There's also breakouts uh, of a horizontal level. So you can see here that we identified a horizontal level on this instrument, and there was you know consolidation at these levels uh, at numerous times, and then there was a breakout. Right. So so 
AMX, this is just an example of a stock of a of a of a stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, the, this, the, the, the price tested this level multiple times of 1473, and then there was a, a breakout, and again we provide a target target region, right? So suddenly, you know, this level, the psychological level was tested often, and then wow, it went through the psychological level. Right. Okay. So uh, again, that's another example of how it identifies these, um, these, uh, uh, these, 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 uh, uh, these psycho important psychological levels um, in the market. Now, many of you, uh, or I'm, I'm sure many of you, some of you maybe, but many of you is probably more correct, um, have heard this term uh, called the trend is your friend, and. Um, if, if that's something that you believe in, right, in actually catching the trend and, and, and playing the trend, right, trying to ride this wave of, of movement, um, these are the kind of opportunities that you're looking for. Uh, we call them breakout opportunities, right, where there is now a potential that the trend has changed in this situation from, from an, a bullish trend to a bearish and in, in this situation from a horizontal trend to a bullish trend, right? So now it's uh, potentially a time for you to, to ride a, a new trend in the, in the market, okay? Now, uh, uh, you know, although uh, this might be a, a, a theory that you believe in, if, you believe, if you're a trend trader, um, there, are, uh, another, there is another um, school of thought, right? And that is, um, what we call swing traders. Swing traders are not trend traders. They're the opposite of trend traders. They don't want to ride a big trend. Right? What they want to do is they want to uh, ride uh, a, um, uh, the movement, the up and down movement between support and uh, resistance. Okay, and so um, we, we can see over here, there's this movement between support and resistance uh, let me get my pen, my drawing object again. It's uh, going up and down, up and down. And you can see that we've identified, um, uh, this is uh, uh, Alcoa uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. You can see that um, the trend has not yet broken, right? It hasn't gone through the support or resistance levels yet, right? It's still trading within the trend, right? But there is this, um, if you're a very, very, a short-term trader, um, there is this opportunity to take a, a very short-term position on this instrument. Right? Okay, this is quite an old example. This is not what the the uh, Alcoa graph looks like um, at the moment. Um, similarly, on uh, this example on GBP and ZD, um, identified auto charters identified these uh, uh, the, these consolidation points, right? This um, uh, support. Um, it was support, then it became resistance, it became support again. Um, uh, level on GBP and ZD, and then potentially highlighting the fact that uh, this price is moving towards this level, right? And I'll show you some examples of this in MetaTrader um, itself. Now, um, I wonder um, if uh, I could ask the, the, my colleagues at FP Markets to give me access to the question section of GoToMeeting because I can't actually see the question, um, the question tabs. Um, so, um, if you guys could could make me uh, not only a presenter but actually an organizer on the on the on the webinar, uh, that would help me because then I could see the questions uh, coming uh, coming through. Uh, but uh, so so I'll try and answer questions as we go if they're relevant. Otherwise, I'll leave it towards the end of the uh, the end of the presentation. Hopefully, I'll get access to the the questions and answer uh, question and answer panel. All right. Um, uh, uh, in, in the meantime, let me continue uh, with uh, some of the other types of analysis that Autochartist uh, identifies for you. So the next thing I want to show you is this, um, um, this thing called the large movement. Now, this has been uh, really useful in the last uh, few days. <laughs> I'm sure you would agree. Um, Autochartist identifies for you um, uh, exceptionally large movements in the market, right? And you might think that, oh, what's so special about, about that? The, well, the special thing about, about this is that a, a large movement on Euro Swiss franc is very different from a large movement on GBP JPY, right? So if any of you have ever traded GBP JPY, you'll know what I mean, right? So, so uh, uh, you know, Euro Swiss franc trades, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, 
20 pips, 50 pips a day, uh, GBP JPY trades 20 to 50 pips in an hour, right? <laughs> also, <laughs> depending on what time of day you're actually trading, right? So, so, uh, uh, um, uh, so what what auto charters does is it keeps track of, you know, from a statistical level. For those of you who are statisticians, we keep track of the the movement distributions for every instrument for every time frame, and then we identify when a movement has been in the uh, 98 percentile, right? So big movements, right? So um, so uh, uh, exceptionally large movements, right? One in a hundred type of movements. And when um, and when you see these, uh, when it sees these movements, it actually identifies them for you, right? So so you can see that this movement from this level of whatever it was, 1566 uh, in the past to 1516 over here um, has been exceptionally large. Uh, and then, so now it potentially saying to you, hey, um, it's exceptionally large. There's a bit of a turnaround. We might be seeing a, a bit of a, a bit of a pullback uh, coming up, right? Short term, which hey, look at hey, Presto, look at what happened in the last few days, right? Uh, uh, markets are down 10% one day, up 10% the next day, right? Um, uh, the the mean reversion uh, traders out there are absolutely licking their lips, right? Um, uh, and then the trend traders are uh, losing their shirts, right? Uh, but wait until the markets stable out. The trend traders are going to start making money, and the mean reversion guys are start going to start uh, losing out, right? So it really um, all becomes um, a, a test of your flexibility as a trader and how you're going to adjust to these uh, changing market uh, conditions. But again, uh, most importantly, is risk management, which I'll come to uh, in in just a, in just a few minutes. I'm watching the time very carefully. Um, Okay, and then um, there's one more kind of movement uh, that we identify, and that's what we call consecutive candles. Um, so if you enjoy looking at, let's say, 30-minute candles or hourly candles or four-hourly candles, um, then, of course, you can um, auto chart identifies for you when there's been an exceptional amount of consecutive candles um, happening in the market. In this situation on LEG, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, consecutive candles um, uh, that it identified uh, on on the market, right? And so potentially for the trend traders out there, you might be thinking, hey, this is going to be a continuation in the trend. For the mean reversions people out there, you think, okay, hang on, this is uh, too much of a bullish movement. We think there's some some downside coming up uh, um, in in the next uh, few candles, right? Okay. So for with all that being said, uh, before I get into the risk management side, let's switch to to MetaTrader, and uh, could I ask my colleagues at uh, FP Markets to give me access or to make me organize and give me access to uh, the, or to make me an organizer of this uh, panel, otherwise I cannot see the, the questions coming through, uh, please. Um, I, hope they're, I hope they're listening and hearing, uh, hearing my uh, request. Okay, so, um, uh, here we go. You all can see my my MetaTrader. Um, I'm going to switch to a reasonable hourly chart. And where do we start? So the first thing you have to do is you need to download the Auto Chartist Expert Advisor. Uh, the Auto Chartist Expert Advisor is free for for you at FP Markets, right? So um, uh, if you want, why is it free? And you're wondering how Auto Chartist makes its money? Um, we do not get a rebate on the trades you make. Auto Charters does not get uh, paid for your to give FP Markets your name or your telephone number. We get paid a license fee, right? Um, as a technology provider, so um, there is no conflict of interest. In fact, um, we want to make you a profitable trader because uh, 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 the more people use our product, the more we get paid, and um, and so. Uh, we are completely in line with you as a trader, right? FE Markets pays us a license fee for on your behalf um, for for you to use the, the software. So, you know, put your guard down. No one is trying to uh, sell you uh, anything here. Uh, the, the product is, is free to use. So just go to the FP Markets website. Um, they've got a, a, a link under um, uh, Partners, Auto Chartist. Uh, and uh, you can get the link from there to download this expert advisor. And what it's it's a typical uh, uh, kind of a setup. Setup. It's uh, you know you go click next, 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 and at the end of it all, you get two uh, little links uh, inside your MetaTrader. One is an expert advisor called Auto Chartist. Another one is called 
uh, it's an indicator called risk calculator, which I'll go to in just uh, in just a moment, right? But the expert advisor, you literally just drag and drop it onto your MT4, and um, it goes and requests some data from our servers, and it'll pop up in just a in just a few moments with some interesting uh, information on our screen. Okay, so um, it's called an expert advisor, right? But don't worry, it does not trade. On, on your behalf, right? It, um, it's, a, it's an expert advisor uh, uh, purely in the sense because we need to use this technology to allow us to produce a little floating window in your, uh, in your MetaTrader. And what it does is that it scans the market of all the instruments you have in, uh, in your market watch window. Right, so I've got a ton of different um, instruments in the market watch window, and you can see because of that, I have 25 pages of of uh, of uh, uh, opportunities in my uh, in my uh, auto charters window. Okay, um, and so um, of course this is. Uh, insane uh, and so I, I don't want to look at 25 different types of uh, of of, um, of pages 25 pages so what you would normally do and this is of course what i promote for for everyone is uh, get down to what you're actually trading right so so in this situation if i remove uh, a whole bunch of you know opportunity a whole bunch of uh, instrument actually let me not remove um, sorry, let me not remove the uh, the Australian dollar opportunities. Let me just remove a whole bunch of these uh, um, e exotics, uh, you know, which I'm which I'm not interested in. And what you'll actually see is that, um, well, let me just move. I removed uh, quite a major one over there, but for the purposes of this uh, presentation, it'll be absolutely fine uh, to do that. I'm going to remove a whole bunch of exotic uh, instruments and. Um, and uh, that's going to really help me out uh, to uh, to reduce the number of of pages on my uh, on my screen. So I'm going to reduce. I'm just going to bring this down big time. Okay. So let's uh, close this down, and then you can see how uh, Autochartus has now gone down to only six pages. Right. So it's only showing me opportunities on the instruments that I actually have on my. Uh, on my screen, right? And if I want to see uh, what this opportunity uh, looks like, I would click on the view button, and then uh, there it is. Auto Charters actually shows me it changes my chart. Remember, I was in Euro USD hourly chart. It changed my chart to Euro JPY daily chart, and it's showing me the resistance level that was identified um, over here, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, same thing over here. I want to see a big movement. Uh, here we go. Um, on here's a big movement on silver. So order chart is telling us that there's been an exceptionally large movement on 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 silver over the last one, two, three, four, uh, five days. Uh, potentially uh, a turnaround uh, happening over there on silver, maybe for the short term. Here's another opportunity: uh, pound Swiss franc. Another uh, resistance level happening here. You can see it did quite a good job of identifying um, uh, this resistance level. Uh, let me highlight that for you. Uh, consolidation over here, over here, over here, and now potentially another movement up to uh, this level uh, over over here around 117, right, on GBP uh, Swiss franc. It's certainly a very very interesting graph because there's been consolidation. You can see um, and and uh, and very very strong resistance at that level, which it's touched numerous times, right? So a very very interesting opportunity to come back to. I'll try remember this so I can try and come back to uh, looking at how to trade uh, such an uh, such an opportunity in just in just a moment, right? Um, so again, what I'm trying to show you is if you're looking for a place to start trading. You don't know what to do in current market conditions. All you do is you drag and drop this uh, 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 expert advisor onto your chart um, and give it a moment and it'll come up with a whole bunch of uh, information and why is it not suddenly it's not coming up with anything for me. Fantastic. <laughs> of course, during a demo, things have to go wrong, right? That's uh, uh, <laughs> that's uh, always typical of uh, of demonstrations, right? Okay, let's quickly see. Uh, what's going on there? Let's bring that up again. Um, oh, wonderful. I'm not getting any results. Okay. All right. Well, looks like I'll be getting to the risk management side sooner than I thought, right? 
<laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so, so, um, uh, while my technical guys sort that out, uh, I am, uh, I'm going to uh, move on to more important parts of the business, uh, more important parts of the, of, of the business of trading. And that is, um, the, the risk management, uh, the risk management side. Okay. Um, and so, um, uh, and so just to, just to, just to end off on that, obviously, um, because uh, I'm re really weary of, of your time. I don't want to take up more than um, uh, um, I can't, I can't, um, I don't want to really take up more than 30 minutes or 40 minutes of your time. So I'll, I'll really want to, want to move on. The idea here though, is that auto charters saves you time in finding uh, market opportunities. Okay. And so, uh, this is obviously very, very, uh, uh, important for you and it shows you opportunities that you may have missed. Now, the given current market conditions, um, I actually think that you'll enjoy this, um, uh, uh, even, even more. I was just told actually, I'll see, sorry, I'm a bit distracted. I was just told that for some reason, um, I can't be made organizer um, because I'm not sure why. Maybe there's some kind of technical issue on GoToMeeting, so I can't see your questions. So I am hoping um, that um, uh, some of my colleagues will actually send some questions through on the chat window uh, for me uh, uh, so that, um, uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, okay, so so um, uh, I think that um, hopefully um, I don't really understand the messages they're telling me to do. So I think what they'll do, they'll what, maybe they'll they'll copy and paste some messages, some questions for me into this chat window. Uh, I think, and then what I'll do is I'll try answer it in 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 that way. Um, so. Um, looks like more things are going wrong than I expected. So, you know, <laughs> uh, not only was I late with the wrong time zone, now I'm struggling with the with the uh, with the actual platform itself. But but anyway, okay, back to back to the the, the real business. Um, uh, what you know, what do we do in in current market conditions, right? What what I mean, the markets are going absolutely crazy. We're struggling. What are we? Uh, uh, not only what are we trading, right? You can everything is moving now, right? You can almost throw a dart at a dartboard. Things are moving, but things are moving up and down. They're insane, and now is a real, real um, important time to really learn about uh, risk management and and position sizing. Okay, and so auto charters. Um, gives you this ability to it shows you how much uh, instrument is going to be moving over the next hour four hours and 24 hours okay and so um over here is uh, just a screenshot okay of an example of, of uh, australian dollar 60 minute chart and auto charter says okay in the next one hour this is the price range we're expecting of movement in the next four hours and the next 24 hours for those of you who are options traders um, this is uh, really uh, what we call uh, an options an options curve, okay? Um, but really, what we can look at it as is an expected price volatility curve. And 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 how does it do this? It's actually really really smart the way it does this. Um, uh, and this graph here on the left, you'll actually see this is the Australian dollar volatility for every hour of the day. You can see the hours of the day at the bottom axis over here, right? From zero to twenty three, and you can see how the volatility um, uh, fluctuates for every hour of the day, right? Um, uh, 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 1 a.m., uh, 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 um, 7 a.m., uh, 9 a.m., uh, uh, again, uh, peaks at, you know, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, these are for all the openings of all the different uh, markets uh, that that are trading, right? The, the, the Tokyo market, the, the, the European market, the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, uh, Australian market open, the US market open, each one of these market openings creates massive volatility, right? And so uh, you need to be aware of the fact that when you're trading, uh, if you, let's say, let's say your trading technique, you, you, you use a 20 pip stop loss, right? Um, you know, that's 
all the time. Let's say you're trading Australian dollar using 20 pip stop loss, but a 20 pip stop loss doesn't work for every time, every hour of the day, right? Um, let's say you're using a 10 pip stop loss. 10 pip stop loss also doesn't work for every hour of the day. That's a 10 pip stop loss, that's a 20 pip stop loss. Right? If you're trading with a 10 pip stop loss on Australian dollar, you're gonna get knocked out so often, right? And not because of bad trading, um, um, this is not because of bad uh, uh, trading uh, uh, technique, right? Or making a wrong judgment of where the market is going. This is uh, purely for, uh, because of market volatility, right? It's the worst possible thing to happen is to get to get um, stopped out of the market because of volatility, not because you, you, you actually made the wrong forecast on the market. I've, I've seen that so often. And believe me, I've lived it. It's happened to me where you, you make it a call, let's say you think it's going to go uh, long, you go long and then the price hits your stop and then just rebounds and shoots up long and then you're on the phone to your broker, hey, you're chasing my stop losses. Uh, that's all nonsense, right? Um, no one's chasing your stop losses. No one wants your 10 bucks. Um, most brokers have got so much um, uh, liquidity on either end of the book, uh, they're not chasing anything, right? The, the problem is the is the is the is you're setting the wrong stop loss levels, right? And taking the, but more importantly than that, right? It's it's about position sizing. So I wanna I wanna show you um, something um, uh, uh, cool over here. Um, uh, uh, but I have to tell the um, the staff to send me the the questions and answers. Um, Okay, so I just told them to send me questions um, over there. Uh, they're giving me some kind of instructions, but I'm not sure what those instructions actually mean. So let me switch to my uh, MetaTrader and I'll show you what this looks like. So let's take the uh, order charts risk calculator and I'll drop it onto my chart. Okay, so check this out. So firstly, um, it's showing us, um, if I tick this little arrow over here, it shows so expected trading ranges, it's actually showing me where order charters thinks the price is uh, moving to, right? In the next um, X, uh, X hours, let me zoom in there, right? So we can see, I'm gonna move this orange line out the way, that's got to do with position sizing. We can see that on uh, pound Swiss franc, uh, let's, use, let's use something with the uh, Aussie dollar. Let's see if I've got something on Aussie dollar. Okay. Okay, on the Aussie dollar. For the next uh, few hours, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It thinks it's going to trade within uh, uh, within the. This is the trading range in the next uh, 24 hours, four hours. Look at there was massive market volatility just a few moments ago, um, and the indicator hasn't updated yet. You can see how it's actually uh, showing you where the price volatility is going to be, but this is just one feature uh, again i'm leaving the the best to last the most important thing that i want to show you is how to uh, manage um, manage your risk uh, and once i do that then i'm going to answer do some q a's so um how would an amateur trader manage their risk an amateur trader would do it as follows. They would say, oh, I'm trading Australian dollar, US dollar, and um, uh, I only want to risk, uh, you know, 20 pips maybe, or here we go, I want to risk 20 pips, and so I want to go long, and this is where I'm going to set my stop loss, okay, because I'm only prepared to lose, you know, uh, $200, right? Um, and so what inevitably happens, if you take a position over here, what will inevitably happen, as you can see by the volatility, just by looking at the graph, you don't even need order charters, right? You can look at the way this graph is moving. If you set your stop loss here, because this happens to be a 20 pip uh, stop loss from, from this level over here, you can just look at the kind of movements you're getting here, right? You're getting big movements. You're getting 50, 60 pip uh, movements over here on the Aussie dollar, right? Setting a 20 pip stop loss is going to do absolutely uh, nothing uh, for you in terms of risk uh, risk management. Right? You're going to hit that you're going to hit that stop loss level almost immediately. 
And so this is unfortunately how a lot of retail traders and what I want to call amateur traders uh, manage their risk. They manage the risk through stop lo through through setting a stop losses based on pips. What you should be doing is setting your stop losses based on market volatility, right? So let's just say I was taking a position on the on Australian dollar right now, and let's say I wanted to go long, I would set my stop loss over here around this level over here, right? Why would I do that? Number one, I can see that this is where a major inflection point. I can see that it's touched this point twice in the past, right? It actually bounced, it actually broke through this level and bounced back to retrace to that level numerous times. This is clearly a very, very important um, a price on Australian dollar, right? This is a very, very important price. So if I was a trader, I would say this is where I'm setting my stop loss level. If you wanted something more aggressive, I might say that, okay, you want something more aggressive? Maybe this level over here, right? Because also this is an inflection point over here. But now you're looking at me and you're saying, hang on, Elan, this is about 50 pips out, right? I'm not prepared to lose $500 on my trade, right? Or $50, whatever you, whatever kind of um, uh, account you're trading with. That's a huge amount of money. I don't want to trade that. And that's exactly the point, right? What you should be doing is you should be changing your volume to manage your risk. Don't change your trading style. Set your stop loss according to market volatility. Don't, and then adjust, don't, sorry, uh, tr set your stop loss according to market volatility and then adjust your volume. And so this is where the risk calculator comes in, right? I want to focus on this little thing over here saying volume. Right, watch that number. If I wanna, if I'm prepared to lose uh, $500 on my trade, it's gonna tell me, Ilan, if you're if you're setting your stop loss at this price over here where the orange line is, right, and you're prepared to lose $500, your position side size should be 0 0.63 loss, right? That means over here. 0.63, right? With a stop loss of uh, whatever this was, right? That is how I would set my position size. So what I'm knowing now in that situation is that if I'm going long and this is where I want to set my stop loss and I want to risk $500, this is my position size. If I only want to risk $50, this should be my volume, 0.07. Now, I'm sure that many of you, what you're doing is you're going in and you're going new order. Uh, you keep it on the default one and you go uh, sell or buy or whatever it is, right? I don't, have, uh, I don't have trading access on this account. And then you're losing massive amounts of money, blaming everyone, uh, you know, uh, your, your mother-in-law, uh, your wife shouting at your kids, you're losing money. Why are you losing so much money? Uh, when actually what you should be doing is 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 changing your your the size of your position. Watch what happens to this volume number if I move my 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 uh, stop loss even further out. Let's say I want to actually set it over here. You see, I'm I'm risking the same amount of cash even on a larger stop loss, but the position size has actually changed, right? Now, this is very, very important. And I'm going to show you a different example because it's all easy to do it on Australian dollar or uh, Euro dollar, right? These are all very simple things because, um, uh, you know, every pip is worth 10 bucks. So you don't need a calculator to work it out for you, right? You just set your stop loss, work it out, and it's, it's trivial. What about if you're trading pound yen, right? The killer of all traders, I call it, right? If you're planning to lose some money, trade pound yen. Right. Um, okay, so let's just say uh, I want to trade short, and this is where I want to set my stop loss, right? Because I can see that this was an inflection point uh, in the past. I want to go short, um, and this is where I want to set my stop loss at 131.85, and I want to risk 50 bucks. Now, GBP JPY is obviously not 10 bucks a pip, right? I'm setting my uh, a stop loss. 83 uh, 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 pips away, right? 83 pips away. It's a massive uh, uh, amount of pips away. But I only want to risk 50 bucks. I would set my volume to be 0 0.04, right? So what would my position look like? 
it would look like a stop loss at this price over here. And that would be my volume, right? And then I would click on uh, sell. Obviously, my trading is disabled now, but, but you can see that this is how I would set up my position. And so inevitably, what, en what ends up happening is that um, you can open instruments on different, uh, you can open positions on different instruments and even different intervals, right? So I can trade a four hourly chart and use exactly the same technique, right? I'm going to trade a four hourly chart, set my stop loss over there, right? And again, all I'm doing is setting the amount of, of uh, 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 risk that I want to place uh, on this trade, right? So I can trade 15 minute charts, one minute charts, uh, daily charts uh, across different instruments, but always risk the same amount of capital, right? It's an amazing thing. What you see is that um, when you start doing this kind of thing, and if you're like me opening up, you know, I don't open up more than or less than like four or five positions at a time because I like to hedge all my uh, positions, you end up having a list of uh, uh, trades and all strange volumes and, 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 you know, and strange stop losses. But the amazing thing is for each of them, you know how much capital you're actually putting at risk because you've set your capital not through pips, but through dollar terms, right? Of course, it, you know, or it could be Australian dollar. In this situation, it's Australian dollar terms. If you've got a dollar-based account, it would be dollar terms. If you've got a euro account, it would be, it would be um, uh, euro terms, right? So what I really, really want to uh, promote uh, right now is, is uh, risk management uh, through, um, through position sizing. Please, everyone, uh, you have to uh, manage your risk uh, through uh, position sizing at the moment, especially uh, with current um, uh, market uh, volatility, right? Now, if we go back into this show expected price range movements, um, uh, uh, I want to show there's a bit of a shortcut over here, right? So if you actually set your, uh, let's say your your risk metric, I'll set my, my uh, dollar amount that I want to uh, uh, risk at $100, um, I don't, I can move my stop loss level around if I wanted to, okay? And you can see how my position, uh, my volume changes. But notice on my uh, little expected price range movements, I've actually got some ideas here. So, so it actually gives you some of this information without even moving the little orange line around. It tells you that if you want to go long and you're setting your uh, stop loss at this price over here at the daily volatility level at 058876, set your volume to be 0.08, right? If you're setting it at the four hourly volatility level, set your volume to be 0.16. If I then go and I wanna, if I wanna go short, I just move this line over to the other side, you can see that uh, in this situation, if I want to set my uh, uh, position on the short side on, uh, at the daily volatility level, it's 0 0.60186. Uh, I set my volume to be 0 0.1. So there's a few shortcuts for you if you're lazy uh, to move uh, this orange line around. But what I really want to, I really want to promote you actually moving this orange line around and getting a visual feel for where you're setting your your stop losses. Okay, you can get really advanced with this tool. If you don't trade the current spot price, you can get really advanced and you can actually set custom entry prices. And when you do that, you'll actually see a green line coming in, right? So for example, let's say I want to do a sell limit. I want to set, open my position, open a short position if my price uh, 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 hits the green line and then set my stop loss over here, right? Then it'll actually calculate the risk between the green and orange line, or green and yellow line. So now what I'm, I'm not, this is a bit advanced and we'll go through this in a subsequent webinar. Hopefully I'll get the time zone, right? The next webinar about how to use, um, you know, limit orders and, and, uh, and stop orders on this. But essentially, if I want to do a set, a, open a position when I, um, uh, when the price hits green and then go short, and then uh, put a stop loss at uh, this orange line, 
it also tells me my volume, right? So now it's not working out my volume between uh, the current price and, and this orange line. It's not doing that. What it's actually doing, it's working out the risk at this line over, over here, right? So, so it's quite smart and, and um, it can get pretty, pretty advanced. Um, and so we'll leave that to a, um, a, um, a subsequent, uh, a subsequent uh, webinar. In terms of the uh, on the, on the chat window, and I've, I see that um, I've got one or two of them um, being shown uh, to me here. I want to see if I've got data coming through on my uh, MetaTrader uh, now on my order chartist. Hopefully it is. Okay, there it is. Yeah, looks like my tech guys fixed that while I was talking. Um, so one of the questions is, can a user define the criteria? for support resistance and also combine uh, with the custom rules for breakout, uh, look for breakout on support resistance. Okay, so, so the first thing I wanna show you is that there's some filtering mechanisms here. So if you're only interested in support and resistance levels, um, you can actually a filter for breakouts or approaches, right? And I'll show you what that looks like. So let me erase all the different types of, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 technical indicators and just look at um, the, the support levels. We call them key levels, right? So if you want to do that, what you do is you click that little filter button and then you uh, adjust your filters and hopefully in uh, a few seconds it goes back to our servers and hopefully it'll come back and there it is. So now you can see there's only support and resistance levels. And the way to see which ones are breakouts and which ones are uh, approaches is so here is one on Euro Hub, which is a breakout. The way I knew it was a breakout is um, by looking at the little colored icon. Not sure why my computer is a bit slow today, um, probably because I'm doing a screen share, right? So that always slows things down. So you can see this little icon, let me highlight it for you. This little orange icon, uh, uh, the orange, I mean colored icon, they show us that uh, this uh, these are all breakouts. The gray icons, those are uh, approaches, right? So if I want to see uh, this approach pattern on, let me find something that's a bit, um, uh, okay, here we go, oil. So here's an approaching pattern, right? Um, uh, where was that? I can't see it on my on my screen. Let me find something that looks pretty good. I wanna see what that looks like. Ah, why it's not uh, suddenly not displaying anything. I don't know why I'm struggling uh, today uh, with my uh, with my auto chart. It's very strange. I mean, uh, never had these kind of problems before. Um, Oh, again, no patterns found. Again, so some some technical glitch happening. Okay, um, but the idea is that in this filtering section again, um, uh, what what you would do is you would you would filter what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a breakout on key on the horizontal level support resistance, you would just tick breakout. And again, here you can say what kind of instruments or what time interval you're trading on. I don't like to trade on 15 minute, 30 minute uh, intervals. Um, you know, I think the maybe the world of trading has changed now. Most people were in the office trading with it, you know, sometimes they open up their meta, sometimes they don't at work. Uh, now that are people are at home, maybe you've got your meta trader open, you know, more, more frequently. And so you can, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, keep it open throughout the day and you can monitor 15 or 30 minute candles, you know, for most people, um, you know, there's too much market activity on, on, on 15 or 30 minute candles and look at hourly, four hourly and daily candles, right? Or uh, again, you can, if you're only trading chart patterns, you know, and you're a swing trader, you can just click chart patterns uh, emerging, right? And click save and then it'll show you only the emerging uh, chart patterns. Um, again, don't know why uh, the stuff is not showing up right now. From us, we'll, uh, we'll fix that as soon as we, as soon as I get off this, uh, as soon as I get off this call and report it to my, uh, to my tech team. Um, so that's how you, you do that. I wonder if, if um, I can get some more, um, uh, some more questions from the, the, the questions panel. Um, I'm really surprised if there aren't any questions about the, uh, about the, 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 the risk management uh, side, given current 
uh, given current market uh, conditions. Okay, anyway, let me show you one last thing um, while I'm here. So uh, when you install this uh, MetaTrader uh, plugin, you'll be asked to complete a, a little form uh, giving your email address. And what this does is that it subscribes you to a daily email. And don't worry if you want to unsubscribe, you just, there's a, there's a link at the bottom of the email. This is just, just a screenshot of the email. There's a link at the bottom of the email that allows you to unsubscribe. Uh, uh, so you can just uh, click unsubscribe at any time and it takes you off that, that email. But what this does is that it gives you a snapshot of the market, right? Um, it can give it to you once, twice, or three times a day. And the way you can adjust that is um, actually in the uh, MetaTrader uh, plugin. Um, you can uh, go into the little, uh, one of the little icons on the top. I'll show you that. Shouldn't have closed that down. Yeah, definitely something wrong. A lot of, taking a lot of time to, to do that. Um, so here we go. I'm subscribed to the Asian session. That means it comes up before the open of Tokyo. Um, and if you want to get something for, let's say, before the open of New York, you can just uh, subscribe before the open of, of New York and in your language, right? If I wanted it in Russian before the open of New York, or if I wanted it in uh, in uh, Turkish before the open of New York, I can just click subscribe and I'll get that in, in, you know, in the language at the time of my preference. But let me show you what this looks like. So this gives you an idea of what's going on in the market. So here is one of these things that came up. Um, on euro dollar, it showed us how uh, there was a large bearish movement on daily candles on euro dollar, right? Telling us, hey, there's potentially a bullish movement uh, up on euro dollar now, right? If the trend changes. Here is something on USD JPY um, this uh, support level and an approach to the support level. Pound yen, you can see in this situation, still trading within the trend, right? There's no breakout or support. What this thing actually shows you, so the first time you read it, it'll take you, let's say, uh, five minutes to read this report, right? Um, and then you'll, you'll probably, uh, you know, look at uh, this kind of uh, text be below, below this information. Now, um, after a while, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up scanning this report and seeing, hey, like what's, what's actually going on in the market? Is it something of interest? and launching your, your meta and taking a position, right? So this thing is meant to give you a snapshot of what's going on uh, in the market. Um, I found it quite useful. Um, sometimes I even found it useful just to know that there's some high impact uh, uh, economic events coming up, right? Um, uh, so the Bank of England is, is uh, releasing interest rates, uh, you know, uh, uh, today and so, this is obviously very important and I need to be aware of that and potentially take a position on that or stay out of the market depending on your risk tolerance, right? So, so even if it's just to see what's come, coming up in the market, um, some changes in the market, you know, what's going uh, up or down. So, so very, very uh, uh, interesting little uh, email to get. Takes you just a few minutes. I especially enjoy these uh, large movements. I want to see where the market activity um, is happening. Um, uh, you know, over the last um, over the last uh, 24 hours of uh, of trading, right? For me, that's extremely extremely important. All right, I'm not getting uh, many uh, questions pasted into my uh, into my chat window. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they are, but uh, so what are we going to be covering in the next in the next few webinars that are going to be coming up? Uh, number one, there's going to be oh, hang on, uh, here is something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Richard. Thank you very much. He likes my accent. Thank you, Richard. It's a, a strong South African accent. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so yeah. Uh, but I, I actually live in in the United States right now. Uh, uh, I live in Austin, Texas. So my kids they sound like little Texans, right? Uh, they have a Southern drawl. Uh, so it's actually very strange hearing us both in in one room. Um, so in the next few accents. I think you actually listen to me. Uh, I need another espresso at four o'clock in the morning. So in the next uh, few uh, sessions, what are we going to be covering? The first thing we're going to be covering um, is which opportunities uh, to trade, right? So I know all of you are saying, hey, 
Ilan, how you've got all these trading opportunities, 18 pages of them. Uh, which opportunities should we actually be trading? And um, lo and behold, we actually have uh, performance statistics which show you which patterns are doing well, which patterns are doing badly. If you copy and paste that into a, if you copy and paste that into a, um, uh, in, into a browser window, you'll actually get all of those. But I'm not going to do that now. We'll actually go through uh, looking at past performance statistics in order to help you decide what to trade. Right. So that's very important. Obviously, picking your entries. And number two, we're going to actually go much more in depth and actually do some live trading. Uh, uh, and showing you the risk management side um, of the tool, right? Which is extremely, extremely important. In fact, in fact, given current market conditions, I'd say that we should uh, um, uh, set um, a look at the, the 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 risk management sooner rather than uh, later. Um, um, so, uh, one, oh, uh, there actually is another question coming up here. Um, will the uh, will the uh, risk management module um, the question was, will the risk management module set the position size in the trading screen? It does not do that by default. If you want to set the position size, you actually have to set it yourself. You actually have to type in right, the position size. Right? You can copy and paste the stop loss that you've set visually. You have to uh, actually type in uh, the volume. Right, it doesn't set it for you. Where uh, Autochartist doesn't try to tell you what to do. It's simply there as an advisory tool. Right, um, you have to actually manually uh, put it in uh, there. Okay, um, but again, we'll go into all those details. We'll actually set some some live positions. We'll we'll have a live account trading. So that's going to be uh, super fun. Always always love uh, love those. Um, another question. Oh, I can see a lot of questions coming through now. So uh, does Autochartus only operate on FX? No, it does not. Autochartus operates on all the instruments in your Meta. Okay, so uh, it operates on uh, here's the uh, US 100. Okay, it operates on that, and uh, it operates on uh, on your individual stocks. Uh, it operates on absolutely everything that you see in your market watch window. That's what it operates on, right? It literally covers the entire spectrum. So it's a very important. You can see that I'm getting these crazy amounts of pages of, of, of information here. You know, I, I would don't trade exotics. I don't know if you do, but the first thing I would do is remove all the exotic instruments, the instruments you don't trade from the market watch window. That really just cleans things up uh, within your order charters window, right? It, it's really unwieldy looking at 18 pages of of trading opportunities, you know, no one can can do that, right? So that's the first step, uh, but it works on everything. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I I really appreciate your time. I want to apologize again uh, for being an hour late. I set the time in Google saying 7 p.m. Australia time. It set it at 4 a.m. Austin time. I don't know what happened. I, I I you know I hate it when people don't respect my time. Um, and I'm really sorry to have been disrespectful to yours. Uh, I apologize. It won't happen again. Um, but I, I hope you did enjoy this webinar and found something useful out of it. Um, I'm sorry it was very superficial, but in the next few webinars, we'll dig deeper. And I, um, I hope to see you then. Thanks again.